prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Well, good evening, church folks, family, and friends. Uh, while the storm's raging outside, we are safe and protected uh, inside as the thunder rolls. Uh, hope and pray that uh, uh, the, uh, the internet stays up and the lights stay on because it is going to get dark if these lights go out. So uh, just bear with us and let's uh, get this thing started tonight and welcome. Uh, welcome to our Bible study time here at the Op Church of Christ. My name is Trey Poole. I am the minister of the gospel here at the Op Church of Christ, and we're excited that you are with us tonight as we study the Word of God together. As we get started, we want to uh, share a few announcements. So church family, uh, y'all pay attention here. Uh, Operation Christmas Joy has started again. Uh, all the information sheets are on the table here at the building in the foyer. Uh, and all those boxes are going to be due back in October, so please uh, be advised of that. Also, uh, for your viewing pleasure, we now have a YouTube channel here uh, for the Op Church of Christ that you can watch uh, all of our church services on and our 4 o'clock devotionals as they will be uploaded from our Facebook page uh, to our YouTube channel. So thank you to Carl, Sheila, Ray Jeffrey uh, who have worked on that for us. We will be having a drive-by shower, a wedding shower, uh, for Ashlyn, uh, our daughter, uh, here at the church building on Saturday, July the 25th from 2 until 4 o'clock. Uh, there is more information about this on our group page, so please uh, make sure you check that out. The elders have decided to continue uh, with only our Sunday morning services uh, through the end of the month of July. Uh, so for now, we're going to carry on just like we're doing Sunday morning. Uh, we'll meet for our Sunday morning worship here at the building at 1030, uh, which will be streamed live as well on Facebook. Uh, also, uh, we will be uh, streaming live on Facebook our Sunday evening worship and our Wednesday night Bible study time. So please keep that in mind. Please be prayerful for our elders and your preacher as uh, this uh, continues and uh, be prayerful for uh, each other as well. We're going to have a graduation party uh, for Samuel Moore and Braden Bryant. Uh, it's going to be hosted at uh, Becky Wilson's house on Saturday, July the 18th, starting at 5 o'clock. So if you will, uh, please let her know if you are uh, going to be able to come. There's a, an announcement about this on our Facebook page that you can uh, comment on. Uh, and let us know for food uh, if you're coming and how many. All right, tomorrow. Tomorrow is food for friends. Uh, we've got that food truck coming. Don't know exactly when. We also have our produce box truck uh, is coming tomorrow as well. So we got a lot happening tomorrow. Uh, we're asking you to please be here about 10 o'clock. Don't know exactly how that's going to work with both trucks coming, but we'll get it done. But we're going to need all hands on deck. So if you can be here tomorrow, uh, please come at 10 o'clock here at the church building. Those in need of our prayers. Wanda Lloyd uh, is at the Select Specialty Hospital uh, in Pensacola. Uh, her daughters are keeping a, a good um, update on her uh, almost every day, every other day. Uh, so please keep Wanda and her family in your prayers. Uh, Larry Moncrief has been feeling uh, unwell for some time now. I believe he is improving, uh, but please keep him uh, in your prayers. Ann Crane, uh, Jennifer Jones' aunt, has had a reoccurrence of her cancer, uh, and uh, they're asking uh, for prayers for her. Mildred Castleberry, uh, she passed away last Sunday. Uh, there will be no services for her at this time. Anything changes, if you know of anything that comes up, uh, please let us know. But as of right now, there are no services for Sister Mildred Castleberry, who passed away this past Sunday. Uh, Nell Smith. Uh, she tested positive for the coronavirus. There are uh, several, several people uh, out there at the, at the op nursing home, uh, staff and residents uh, who have tested positive uh, for the coronavirus. Please keep them uh, and their families, uh, keep them all in your prayers. Also, Sister Cassie Marler, 
Uh, she is at home. Uh, she is confined to her bed. She's not doing very well. Possibly looking at having a feeding tube uh, surgically implanted uh, in the very near future. So please uh, keep Cassie Marler, uh, her family, Miss um, uh, Kathy Jones, as, as well as Quentin Marler, and the whole family. Uh, keep them all uh, in your prayers uh, during this time. We have several who are shut in. Uh, those who are uh, sick, they're battling uh, ailments and illnesses and health concerns. Uh, those who are uh, dealing with cancer and they're grieving the loss of loved ones, we want to be prayerful uh, for each and every one as we continue to stream live uh, here on Facebook during during a storm. Uh, the song Master the Tempest is Raging comes to mind and we know uh, that God is in absolute control. And we're going to go to God together in prayer. And as always, uh, as, as we bow and pray together, I encourage you to lift up others that are on your mind, uh, that are on your heart, that you are aware of. Lift them up together as we pray and uh, share those uh, in your prayer as we join together. Will you bow with me tonight as we pray? Tonight, Father, we are indeed thankful for your love and your tender mercy. Father, we pray that you'll protect us during the storm. Father, we pray that it will pass through quickly and quickly or destruction, or interruptions. Father, we thank you so much for your love and for your tender mercy. Father, we thank you for all the blessings of life that you've given to us. Father, for the material blessings that we are so uh, wealthy and uh, have an abundance of, we know that each of these come from you. Father, we thank you especially for our spiritual blessings uh, that are ours to enjoy only in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, tonight there are many on our hearts and our minds who are hurting and struggling uh, with so many different situations and uh, circumstances. And Father, we pray for uh, Wanda Lloyd and her family, dear God. Uh, she is in the Select Specialty Hospital and uh, she is uh, uh, striving hard, fighting hard to recover. We pray that as the great physician, the God of all comfort that you are, that you'll bless her, continue to strengthen her, be with the doctors, the nurses, uh, her family, uh, caregivers, all who are with her. Father, we pray uh, for a complete recovery. Father, we continue to pray for Larry Moncrief and for Ann Crane. Father, we pray for Nell Smith and for Sister Cassie Marler. Father, we, we, we pray that you'll bless each one of uh, these and their families, dear God. We know that you are aware of the situations that they face. Father, we pray that you'll be with uh, the family of Mildred Castleberry. Father, she's passed away, and what a, what a sweet, sweet Christian lady uh, she was, the example, the life that she lived. Father, we pray that you'll bless her family, comfort them uh, during uh, this difficult time. Father, for, for all those of our church family who are shut in or sick, Father, they may be battling cancer or, or going through the bereavement process. Father, we pray that you'll help us to stay in touch, stay connected with each other, uh, that you'll help us to uh, encourage one another all that we can. Uh, Father, even though we have to social distance and be careful during this time, uh, Father, we just pray that you'll strengthen us, uh, that you'll encourage us and remind us of, of who we are, who we serve, and how we are to be about our lives as your people in this world. And Father, now tonight as we pray for a good uh, recall of those things, and we, we pray for uh, good, receptive, and fertile hearts and soil uh, that your word, the seed of the kingdom, can be proclaimed. And dear God, it will take root, it will produce fruit, and uh, it will grow, and uh, you can be honored and glorified in our lives. Father, be with us now as we study. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, in all things you'll be honored and glorified. Most of all, Father, tonight we just say thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his love. Thank you for his sacrifice. And we ask you, Father, tonight as your children that you will forgive us for our sins. Help us to always have a penitent heart and godly sorrow for our sins. Help us to turn to you and seek your forgiveness. And we, again, thank you for Christ. Help us to walk in his footsteps each and every day so that one day when all of life is over, Father, we can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. And it's through Christ we humbly pray. Amen. Well, all right, pressing on. Uh, no matter what happens, we are going to get through our time together. So go ahead and hold up your Bibles good and high. Want to see who is armed and dangerous uh, tonight as we uh, kind of wrap up, I think this will be our last lesson in, in a book entitled Victory in Jesus, written by Ralph Weinhold. Uh, I'm not going to share with you all the lessons in the book, but at a later date, I'll make sure that you have a copy if you would like one. It's a tremendous 
uh, set of lessons that uh, Brother Weinhold has written. He's the preacher out uh, in Arkansas, I believe, at the Danville uh, Church of Christ. So uh, tonight's lesson is called uh, Victory Through a Christ-Centered Attitude. Victory Through a Christ-Centered Attitude. Attitude. We're going to be in uh, Paul's letter uh, to the church at Philippi. So go ahead and be opening up to Philippians uh, chapter 4. Philippians chapter number 4. And uh, we'll, we'll get to Philippians here uh, in just a second as we get started. But as a letter uh, set up here for us, we need to be reminded of a little bit of this powerful, powerful letter. Remember Paul, the Apostle Paul, is a prince of Philippi. And if there was ever a time for him to be filled with grief and anxiety, it must have been when he wrote uh, this letter. The Apostle Paul was, was in bonds. He was in chains. He was unable to continue his great missionary journeys for the cause of Christ. He was facing the possibility, y'all get this, he was facing the possibility of criminal execution for simply preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it seems that Paul would have every reason to have gloom and despair, yet Philippians, this letter to the brethren at Philippi, is one of the most optimistic epistles in the entire New Testament. The very theme of this letter is... Rejoice! Rejoice! And it, it, it radiates with joy and peace and providence and spiritual power. Philippians includes one of the most encouraging and perhaps uh, well-loved verses in the Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Raise your hand if you know Philippians 4, 13. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who raised a hand. We all know Philippians 4.13, where, where Paul, again from prison, wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, in this very brief statement here, Paul expressed an attitude of faith and confidence in our victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and in this verse, we find keys we find keys which can dynamically change our lives if we will live with the I can attitude. The I can attitude simply boils down to because I choose to. I can attitude is, is because I choose to think or act or live or speak like Christ. We're going to explore uh, this I can do attitude tonight from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. And the first point, there's three points that I want us to consider. Number one, the priority of this attitude. Number two, the possibilities of the attitude. And then number three, the power source of the attitude. All right, so let's consider number one tonight as we're in Philippians, Philippians chapter four, the priority of the attitude, the, the I can attitude. You see, most people recognize, I believe, the importance of a positive attitude toward life, uh, toward even ourselves. For years, self-help books have been printed, and, and, and you know that they emphasize the power of positive thinking and the importance of even maintaining a good, positive, optimistic attitude. Now, long before these books were published, the wise man Solomon wrote, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. And there in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, the Bible says, For as a person, for as a man, thinks in his heart, thinks within himself, so is he. Solomon was saying that we will become whatever we keep in our thoughts, whatever we dwell on and ponder on. And so Paul wrote here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can. Now I'm going to ask you to say those two words with me. Repeat after me, I can. Again, I can. One more time, I can. You see, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is, is the attitude we're focused on tonight. When, when we speak of the priority of this I can attitude, 
What we are simply saying is that such thinking is essential. It is an absolute necessity because without it, we program ourselves, we program our minds for defeat in this life and even in the one to come. So the battle is up here for our minds, for our thought process. And see, the principle of this I can attitude has a spiritual application uh, for our walk of faith. Now, many Christians tell themselves, you know, things like, I can't control my temper. I can't bridle my tongue. I can't win souls for Jesus. They have a negative attitude. And this negative attitude poisons our souls and it will paralyze us spiritually. And it will cause us to lose battles in our spiritual war against Satan that we should be able to win for the Lord Jesus Christ simply because we are thinking, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, we're talking about tonight a Christ-centered attitude. The I can do attitude. A preacher one time told the story of a lovely Christian woman who was about about 20 years old, and, and she, she was very badly crippled. And one night after this preacher had finished preaching his lesson, uh, the young woman asked for the prayers of the church. And, and she basically confessed that she had been more crippled in spirit than she had been in body, and that she was allowing her physical condition to serve as, as an excuse, as an excuse for not telling other people about Jesus. A year later, a year later, 13 precious people who had not known Christ had been led to the Lord Jesus Christ by this paralyzed woman who at one time had allowed her negative attitude to paralyze her spiritually in her efforts to even attempt to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And when she began to say with Paul our scripture text of Philippians 4.13, and not just say it to be saying it, but she said it because she believed it and she meant it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what happened? She turned defeat into spiritual victory. And you and I can do the very same thing. Why? Because the, the basic difference between saying, I can, and thinking, I can't, is the difference between faith and unbelief. Let me share with you what I'm, I'm talking about. You remember back in Numbers, back in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers? Numbers chapter 13, uh, the, the faithful spies who explored uh, the land and the unfaithful spies. You had ten that were unfaithful. You had two that were faithful. Well, the unfaithful spies who went out and explored the promised land, the land of Canaan, they returned with a negative, evil report. They told Moses and the people, in effect, we can't take the land. They said the inhabitants of, of the land are like, they're like giants. And we're like grasshoppers. There's no way that we can overcome them and take the land. The faithful spies, those two faithful spies, they came back and they reported, let's go up and at once take the land. For this is God's will and God's promise will be with us. The ten spies went on and said, we can't. We can't. But those two spies said, we can, with God's strength, with God's help. And those ten unfaithful spies, you remember, they never were allowed to enter the promised land. But those two faithful spies, there in Numbers chapter 13, they were permitted, they were allowed to go into uh, the promised land and help conquer it. Well, I believe the same basic scene is repeated again and again and again. In the Lord's church. Those who trust in their own strength, those who trust in their own abilities and their own talents are saying, we can't preach the gospel in all the world. The problems are too big. The challenges are beyond our abilities. In contrast, though, 
to this negative attitude of unbelief. A few are saying, we can take the gospel to all the world. If God is for us, who can be against us? Those faithful few are saying, let us rise up at once. Let us be about the task that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us, for he has promised he will always be with us. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. And we know, we know that he will help us in all things. One day though, one day those, those who say, I can will be separated from those who say, I can't. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And we know that scene there in Matthew chapter 25. We know that one group will uh, enter the eternal land of promise, while the other group will go away into uh, eternal destruction because of their unbelief and their disobedience, their inaction. We read about it in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 all the way down to verse 46 about the sheep and the goats. Those who say, I can, and they do. And then those who say, we can't, and they don't do. Well, when we speak of the priority, the priority of this I can attitude, we are saying that this is an important, essential attitude of faith for us to develop. Since only those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved eternally. So what we're looking at tonight from Philippians 4 and verse 13, this I can do attitude is top priority. It is absolutely essential. Consider number two with me. We'll move from the priority of the attitude, I can, to the possibilities of this I can attitude. So here, what should we expect to accomplish through our personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? You ever thought about that question? What, what should we expect to accomplish, to achieve, to get done through our personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Now please understand, as we study the Word of God tonight, that Paul did not say, I can do a few things, or I can do some things. Not even did Paul say, I can do most things. What did Paul say? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things, everything that God wants and expects me to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, that means that everything God wants, everything God commands us to do, we can do through the spiritual strength and power which flows into our hearts from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, here in Philippians chapter 4, uh, this, this section of scripture teaches us uh, some of what we can do through the power of Christ. And remember, I can do because I choose to. The battlefield is right up here. We're not saying I can't. We're saying I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What are some of those things? Well, let's examine for a, a few moments uh, all of uh, Philippians, cer certain key places here in Paul's letter. What, what is it that we can expect to do? Well, I can love. I can love like the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we read back in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1 where Paul wrote, Stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. My beloved. My dearly beloved. My dearly loved and cherished brethren. Paul was using a very strong Greek word for love and affection. And here he is referring to these Christians as beloved. The Greek word is agapetos, agape love, that unconditional love. It is a beautiful fact here about Paul's love for these brethren. And that is because he's a Jew and the church in Philippi was primarily made up of Gentiles. 
So there would have been some, some terrible racial prejudice that would have existed between Jews and Gentiles. But in spite of the, the, of the racial tensions, Paul had learned through Christ to love these Gentiles with all of his heart. And I believe when you and I understand that the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom God has given to us, as Paul says in Romans 5, verse 5. Then we can say with Paul through, through Christ, I can learn. I can learn to love others, other people, regardless of the color of their skin or their personal background. I, I can learn uh, to, to love those with pale skin or dark skin. I, I can learn to love the rich or the poor, the educated or the uneducated. I can learn even to love with the love of Christ those who are my enemies and those who have a sinful past. I can love. Something else we can expect to accomplish is I can live in peace. I can live in peace. You see, through Christ, we can learn to be peacemakers. If you will, turn with me in your Bibles here to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. Paul writes, I implore Eudia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. You see, here in Philippians chapter 4, Paul here is, is writing about a problem that existed between two Christian ladies, Eudia and, and Syntyche. Now, we don't know exactly what the problem was between these two, but Paul is appealing to them to work out their conflict, uh, to be peacemakers, to seek peace, and to resolve uh, this conflict. He even went so far as to admonish others to help these two women in overcoming uh, their differences. You know what? Through the strength of Christ, we can be at peace. We can be peacemakers in our own relationships and then peacemakers to, to help others be able to resolve uh, their own conflicts and getting along with each other. We need to seek for peace. You see, the power to live in peace does not come from within us, but it comes from the Lord Himself as it flows through the channels of our faith. I can love, I can live in peace. Here's another one. I can be joyful. I can be joyful. Now, Paul said that through the strength of Christ, we can learn to rejoice we can learn to rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I will say, Rejoice. Remember where Paul's at. He's in prison. A cold, dark, cramped prison cell. Not very big. Not much room. And Paul says, with the attitude of, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. We live in a society which depends on the, on the external stuff of life for happiness and for reasons to rejoice. You see, people think that when the weather is just right, when they're feeling good, or when they have enough money and when everything is going just the way they want it to, then they can be happy. Well, Paul said that the Christian... You and I, we must learn how to rejoice in the Lord. Notice that. Rejoice in the Lord always. Paul's not saying rejoice in the world, rejoice in the circumstances, or rejoice in the situations of life when everything's going well. Paul says rejoice in the Lord, despite or even in spite of whatever the circumstances and situations. We need to find reasons to rejoice in the Lord. You see, uh, Christians rejoicing does not depend on externals for, for circumstances 
that will never be perfect in this life. No, my friend, true Christian joy comes from an internal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And since He is our Lord, and since we are His people and the sheep of His pasture, we can be rejoicing. We can be living lives that is full and abounding in joy regardless of the circumstances we may face in this life. I can be joyful. Here's another. I can avoid worry. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can avoid worry. Paul suggested that the, the demon, the demon of worry can be cast out of our lives through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Notice what Paul says here. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Paul says, Be anxious, that is, do not worry for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You see, the greatest threat uh, to our joy and peace in this life is anxiety, is worry. But through Christ, uh, we can learn to pray. Learn to pray and strengthen our prayer life and trust God. Stop worrying and fretting over things many times that are well beyond our control. We can cast all of our cares on Him through prayer, knowing that He cares for us, knowing that He will lift the heavy burdens from our shoulders and from our lives. And I can't help but think about uh, the song and how true these words are from the song that's entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You know that song? It's one of my favorites. What a friend we have in Jesus. One of the verses in that song says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Through the power of Christ, I'm challenging all of us. Let us use our energies constructively by learning to pray, learning to trust God, learning to let go of things beyond our control instead of worrying about them. Here's another thing. I can control my thinking. I can control what I think about. Paul also mentioned that through Christ we can learn to dwell on, on thoughts, to think on things he said that are true and noble, honorable, that are right and pure and lovely, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. And so, my friend, what we think about will control our lives. Remember, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What we think about will take control of us, will become to be our master, and will ultimately determine our eternal destiny. Now, in view of all of this, Paul urges us to fill our minds with thinking and thoughts uh, that will keep our hearts and our minds pure and clean. And may God help us to take every thought captive, to bring it into the obedience to Christ, 2 Timothy chapter 10, verse 5. I can, I can control my thinking. That negative, unclean thought comes in, kick it out. Replace it with a scripture. Replace it with anything else that's pure and lovely and positive and true and right and godly. Kick it to the curb. Get it out. Take it out. It's trash. Get rid of it. Fill that void with something good and godly. I can control my thinking. Here's another thing to consider tonight. I can learn to be content. I can learn to be content. This is a big one as well. You see, contentment with what we possess is an attitude of faith which can only be learned through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the, the world that we live in, society all around us, is living in the spiritual darkness of Satan. And it is never content. It is never satisfied. It always wants more. Many, many sinners are not satisfied with sufficient funds. They always want more. They may have all the gold. Now they want silver. They want all the silver. Now they want all the whatever. 
more and more and more like the rich farmer, the rich foolish farmer we read about in Luke chapter 12. His crops had done so big, his barns were not big enough, so what was he going to do? Tear down those barns and build bigger barns. We need to learn to be content. You see, some allow financial desire uh, to, to drive them to, to rob and to steal. Dissatisfaction with a, a mate, a spouse, often leads to divorce and even many times to murder. Discontentment is one of those major tools that Satan has as a weapon uh, to use against us. Now, in contrast to uh, discontentment, Paul had learned to be content regardless of how much or even how little he had in life. Look with me, if you will, Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Paul writes, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state. Now, Paul's not talking about state like Alabama, Georgia, Florida. Not that kind of state. Whatever condition, whatever the circumstances that I find myself in, he said, I've learned to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul says, I've learned the secret to being content. You and I need to do the very same thing through the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing, knowing that he will supply our every need. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Paul shared the secret of his victory over discontentment. It is a fundamental attitude of faith. And it's our scripture text tonight, my friends. Philippians 4.13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So tonight, so far, we've talked about the priority of this I can attitude. We've also talked about the second point, the possibilities. Oh, those possibilities of this I can attitude are life-changing, transformational. But I want to give this third and final point tonight. And that is the power source of the I can attitude. The power source. And, and so the attitude, the, the question here that we want to uh, ask is, how can we develop this attitude of triumphant faith? This, this I can do all things attitude. Well, such an attitude would reflect great pride and arrogance, right? I can do all things? No. The power source is the last part of Philippians 4.13. Are you ready? Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Did you get it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ is the power source of this I can do attitude. Rather than an attitude of, of pride and arrogance and being puffed up and Paul saying, look at me, I can do everything. No, this, this is an expression of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. It is through Christ, because of Christ, in Christ, that I can do all things who strengthens me. You see, in humility, Paul recognized how great Christ is, how powerful Christ is, and how much Christ helps us if we will truly rely on and trust Him. I can't think, think of, of a better verse to inject right here than Philippians, uh, not only Philippians 4.13, but in Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, since we're talking about trust, trusting God, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. That's what Paul's getting at when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is a trust issue. I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's confidence here was not self-confidence. Oh no, my friend, it's rather Christ-confidence. 
It was not just positive thinking, but a positive attitude of faith in the Lord. Oh, our society, you well know this. You see this every day as well. Our society emphasizes confidence in self, self-motivation, self-sufficiency, a self-made man or a self-made woman. Such a self-centered life is of the world and of the flesh. And I believe the Apostle Paul warns us about this in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, where, where he said, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So my friends, we need to leave behind worldly thinking, and we need to live uh, the Christ-centered life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The good news is that we can put our faith and our trust in Him as the only and all-sufficient power source of our Christian life. Without Him, we are nothing. Without Him, we have nothing. Without Him, we could not do anything. As, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, without me, you can do nothing, verse 5. He is the only and all-sufficient power source for this I can do all things attitude. And when we are in a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what? We become plugged into Him. Just, just, like, just like any electrical appliance, it's got to be plugged in. If it's got an extension cord on it, if it's got a cord, you got to plug that appliance into the power source for it to work and operate like it can and must. You see, He is our spiritual power. The very same way that that electrical appliance is plugged into its power source, then and only then, can we say with the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So as we close, how do we become plugged into Christ? And how do we begin to develop the right priorities and, and fulfill the, the expectations of this I can attitude? How do we do that? Where, where does that begin? How do we start doing that? Well, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. We join ourselves to the Lord by being baptized into Christ, Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. And it is in baptism that our sins are washed away by the precious and powerful blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 22 verse 16, Ananias asked uh, Saul of Tarsus, and now why tarriest thou? Arise, be baptized, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And we know that he was baptized. And what a powerful transformation began in the life of Saul of Tarsus, who's better known as Paul, the great apostle Paul. And we also receive uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter told that audience on that day, on the great day of Pentecost there in Jerusalem, he said, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, baptism. Baptism is the point of beginning for a new life of trusting and relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it marks the very moment when the old self is, is buried in the watery grave of baptism, into death, so that by our faith in the power of God, uh, our sins are washed away, and a new person, a new person is, is resurrected or raised up from the watery grave of baptism to, to walk in a new life. Paul would tell us in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Oh, my friend, the priority of the attitude, I can attitude, it's essential. It's essential. It is urgent. It is a necessity. But the possibilities... 
the possibilities of this I can attitude. I can love. I can live in peace. I can be joyful. I can avoid worry. I can control my thinking. I can learn to be content. And then the power source. The power source of this I can attitude is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So there's one final question that you and I have to ask ourselves. And that question is, do you, do I, possess this I can attitude? Oh, the world needs to see you and I as Christians, as, as the Lord's church, as the body of Christ, possessing and living in every day this I can attitude. So as we close... Will you say it with me from Philippians 4 and verse 13? You know the verse. Ready? Here we go. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it one more time. And say it this time like you mean it. Come on, let me hear you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Will you bow as we pray? Father God, we thank you so much for your love, Father, for your tender mercy. And Father, tonight as we study your word, we pray that it will sink deep into our hearts. Dear Father, that it will find fertile soil and that it will take root and produce fruit. Dear God, we pray as your children, as, the, as, as your church, dear God, uh, that we will have and uh, strengthen this I can attitude. Father, help us not just to quote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But, Father, help us to, to live it out every single day in our lives. Father, we know we know that you are the power source for our lives uh, as Christians. And, Father, we pray that you'll help us to live every day in that power, regardless of the circumstances or the situations that we may face at home, at work, wherever it may be. Father, we pray that you will strengthen us, that we will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, dear God, that we will rely on and trust in your power, in your word, and your will. And dear God, knowing that you are there with us, uh, that you will not forsake us, that you will not leave us abandoned. Father, uh, we thank you. We thank you for uh, all the resources and the blessings that you shower upon us. Father, those spiritual blessings that are, that are ours to enjoy uh, in Christ. Father, we pray that you will help us to, to arm ourselves and be clothed in the whole armor of God. Dear God, and take our stand and fight and uh, find our victory in and through Christ. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Father, we thank you for his sacrifice. And we pray tonight uh, that you will be with us every step of the way. Father, we know that if, if you bring, bring us to it, dear God, you will lead us through it. And Father, we pray for faith and for courage and boldness to follow you. Father, to stand up and to live the life that Christians are supposed to live in a lost and dying world. That others can see you living in us. Father, help us to, to let our light shine and to live, live a, a salty life in this earth to make a difference for you. And it's through Christ Jesus we humbly pray. Amen. All right, church family, y'all don't forget, one more reminder, tomorrow is Food for Friends. Food for Friends truck will be here at some point in the morning. Don't know exactly what time. Also, our produce truck will be here sometime, hopefully, early afternoon. A lot going on tomorrow. If you can be here to help us, uh, be here by 10. Uh, but if you can't be here at 10, just get here when you can get here, and uh, we'll work this thing out together. God bless you. We love you. And uh, church family, if you need me, call me. Our elders are available. Uh, if, if you need them, please reach out to them. Stay safe, stay connected, stay grounded in God's word. And until next time, God bless you. We love you and take care.